right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're still part of the nervous system, but now we're moving on to the neuron. So this is a nerve cell. So this is what allows us to conduct nerve impulses, be able to respond to stimuli. And this is just the general structure of a neuron. It's got three parts. It has a dendrite, a cell body, and also an axon. All right, so let's look into it. So here's just a couple fun facts. The longest neuron uh, on Earth in an animal is 10 to 30 meters long. Giraffes have neurons of about 5 meters, and humans can be anywhere from 1 to 2 meters. And the amount of time it takes for a nerv the nervous system to respond to some sort of stimulus is 1 millisecond. So it's obviously very quick. So let's look at the three parts of a neuron. We have the dendrite, the cell body, and the axon. And that's actually the order that it's always going to go in. You're always going to start with your impulse coming in. It's going to go through the dendrite, through the cell body, and then finally out the axon. So you might want to pause this to write this all down. So you can do that right now. Uh, and now we'll just go over it. So a dendrite, so what it is, is the branch end of the that extends out from the cell, provides a large surface area to receive uh, the nervous information. So this is where that stimulus is going to come in. The cell body is what controls the nerve, just like any other cell. It's got its organelles, nucleus, etc. And then finally, you have the axon. And what it does is it extends out from the body, carries the action potential, which is the, the impulse or the message, uh, from the cell body, uh, to wherever it needs to be going. Okay? And then at the end of these, we call these synaptic terminals. And we'll see a little visual of this in a minute. So just some functions of the neuron, or some key characteristics of them. Uh, we call this a nerve cell. In terms of structure and function, the structure, there's many entry points for a neuron, but there's only one pathway out. And what it does is it transmits a signal. So it tells your body what's happening in your environment. Okay. The order of it, like I just said, is always going to go dendrite, cell body, axon. Okay. So just remember DCA. Okay. So you can pause that to get that down if you need to. There's not only three uh, parts of a neuron, but there's also three different types of neurons. So this first one's a motor neuron. What it's going to do is it's going to relay a signal to an effector, which means a muscle or a gland. So when we want a muscle to contract, this neuron is going to send the, muscle, the message to contract. Or if we want a hormone to be released from a gland, then that same thing, we're going to send the message. Uh, we also have sensory neurons. This receives a stimulus. So if we put our poor little finger on attack, what's it going to do? It's going to, well, I guess it wouldn't hurt there. It hurt there. And it sends a message from that sensory spot up that neuron in order for us to respond to it. And then finally, the interneuron, which we'll talk about in a minute. It connects motor neurons and sensory neurons. All right, so myelin sheath. What it is, is it covers the axons. So here's an example of it. So what it is, is it's uh, something called neuroglia. And what it is, is neuroglia is just nervous tissue, accessory nervous tissue, and it's called Schwann cells. So what makes up a myelin sheath? They're called Schwann cells, and they're just continually wrapped around it. Oops, sorry if that's too fast. So continuing on, what makes up that myelin sheath or what makes up those Schwann cells is a lipid-based, and it wraps around in order to uh, insulate it. So this fat insulates the neuron. So it doesn't allow anything to exit or enter, which we'll see why that's important coming up. But there are little points in between these sheaths called notes of Ranvier or Ranvier. And what they do is things can exit and enter at these points. Again, you'll see why that's important in the next lesson. So what we're looking at right now, sorry I skipped over that, don't worry about it. Reflex arc. What this is, no, let's do it. Okay, so what a reflex is, it's a rapid or a predictable involuntary response to stimuli. So stimuli is just some sort of input. So it could be seeing something in front of you or it could be you know, something that you're touching. It happens quickly, there's a predictable result, and it's involuntary. You're not thinking about a reflex. So what a reflex arc is, it's the direct nervous message from a sensory neuron to an interneuron to a motor neuron. So it takes us for from our sensory neuron which is some sort of input. It takes it to the interneuron and then back out the motor neuron, which will take it to some sort of muscle or gland. So this is the response. 
So this is happening in our PNS, and this is happening in our CNS. This is the part where it's actually interpreting the signal, and then it has the necessary response. Excuse me. So here's an example. Uh, everybody's probably had the reflex test where the doctor takes the little hammer looking thing, whacks you underneath your patella bone, it sends a signal up your sensory neuron into our spinal cord, and what that spinal cord does, this interneuron which is right here, interprets the signal and says, wow, that felt weird, and it sends the signal back out the motor neuron to the muscle to tell it to uh, contract, and that's why your, your leg flicks up due to that reflex action. So what is the reflex arc? So you're going to want to pause this to write this part down. So motor, sensory, and interneuron form the reflex arc. It begins with the stimulus in your sensory neuron, and the impulse in that neuron flows through the dendrite, cell body, and axon. And then it flows into the interneuron, which again goes dendrite, cell body, axon. It interprets that message and sends it out a motor neuron, which again flows through dendrite, cell body, and axon. And what this does is it triggers the response of an effector, either a muscle contraction or a gland secreting a hormone. Okay, so you can pause that to get that down as well. Here's just an example of a reflex arc. We have some sort of sensory uh, organ, so whatever it is, something visual, touch of the fingers, gets an input sends it up the dendrite through the cell body out the axon here's the interneuron in the dendrite cell body axon and then finally out the motor neuron which is the dendrite cell body and out the axon and it ends up going to an effector in this case it was skeletal muscle so a muscle contraction same picture you can stop and look at it if you'd like see some of the other detail and then just about finally, uh, what is a nerve? It's just a combination of nerve fibers, so all these different neurons. So pretty much what it is is sensory dendrites and motor axons that create these nerves. Uh, pause this if you'd like to get some more information down, but really all we're looking at is the difference here. Difference between sensory neuron, it has a long dendrite because it has to go up in, tor in order to get into that uh, central nervous system and then short axon interneurons neurons just happen in your uh, in your spinal cord so and in your brain so they're very short and then motor neuron short dendrite long axon synapses we're going to get into this more next day when we talk about the synapse and the synaptic gap synapse and synaptic gap all it means is the space in between two neurons okay uh, so it's the space between an axon terminal and then the dendrite of the next one and it can also be that between a neuron and an effector muscle gland, muscle or gland. And what it is is that space between the axon and the dendrite, that's where the neurotransmitters are going to be uh, doing its business. But we're going to talk more about neurotransmitters next day. And this is just what it looks like. So here is your axon. Here is your dendrite. In order to send a signal from one to the next, it uses neurotransmitters. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. We'll go over this in quite a lot of detail tomorrow.